you know, you often hear about uh, controversies and mistakes and sometimes the fallout of significant technology decisions. And so what we wanted to do was to highlight executive leaders with whom we work who are in, either in the process of making big technology decisions or they've already made them. And um, so I want you to share with others what, what you're doing with the decision-making process and challenges that you may be anticipating um, around the decision but also the implementation. So George, what decision are you facing uh, in regards to technology in your district? Well, right now uh, we're at a point where within the year, uh, I would say by June 30th, 2016, basically is when all the technology that we have currently in place we're leasing, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a, um, a robust uh, Wi-Fi environment going on. We've updated our infrastructure on the back end, which mm -hmm. is very nice. Um, okay. The high-level um, infrastructure upgrade. So we've gotten that all taken care of. So with all that being done, our bandwidth is good. We've done all that, all the, all that background work. What we really need to decide now is instructionally. What kind of technology do we want to bring on into our classrooms for good teachers and students, given the fact that we're a Google Apps district? How do we want to grow our Google capacity? Where are we going to go next when all this technology has to be refreshed? Okay. And we're not going to have the things we have in front of us now. So yeah. between now and I would say the fall, we've formulated this technology leadership committee to get representation from a cross-section of our school district, uh, early childhood teachers, administrators, middle school teachers, content area specialists, media specialists, to be part board members, to be part of um, the, de the, the decision making body that's going to review all the various aspects, consider all the things that need to be considered, mm -hmm. in order to arrive at a decision that we hope will have um, consensus among all of our stakeholders that are going to be using the technology. Yeah, yeah. So, George, uh, what kind of outcomes do you expect? I mean, I, I know that you're, you know, you've got a significant decision in front of you, but let's just say two years from now, what would you expect to see happening that's different in the classrooms? And I don't know if you've gotten that far yet. Like, what is that vision that you want to see? Part of that vision is integrated in the decision-making process of what technology do we want to bring in. So for instance, what we realize we have to do is not just look at a bunch of cool devices. We have to ask ourselves, what is it in our classrooms and in our schools that we want to teach and yeah. children to learn? Mm -hmm. And based on that, what are the devices that are available uh, that would enable us to get to that point? And right. also, what are the, the, the non-hardware vehicles that we can use, like Google, like software programs that these devices will allow us to maximize. So we've integrated the, con the conversation between the two things of what's instructionally important educationally and the also the, de the device question, what is that going to be? But what I would like to hopefully see uh, the committee come to the conclusion that we would like to see technology used differently than it's ever been used before in our schools. Yeah. and realize that we're certainly in a changing time. We always say this because technology is always changing, but even so now, having technology not be a place that you go to, like a computer lab, exactly. but, but, um, but, but a thing or a tool that's available with you wherever you are, wherever you're learning, in the classroom, in the library, in the media center, in your science classes, <laughs> integrated with your math activities, in your group work, so it's truly integrated in the learning process because that's how we use it in our lives. We want our children to use it in that way in their educational process. Sure, sure. You know, you, you see um, places around the country where either the decision or the implementation doesn't necessarily go well with, with what they're doing with technology. <laughs> so what, what obstacles might you anticipate? What would you want to try to avoid that you well, see perhaps be a problem elsewhere? Well, it, it's, you know, we're no different. I mean, I think some of these things that may have been identified as problems elsewhere, I mean, we could probably point to ourselves in some way if we look in the mirror. Um, one of the things that's important to realize is that making this kind of decision, number one, it's not we've made the decision, okay, we're done now, let's move on. It's a fluid process. And the other aspect of it is it's a very complex process. 
because you have a lot of factors that you have to take into consideration in making these decisions. Um, and oftentimes schools um, don't have the resources or the wherewithal or the systemic organizational structure in place to really pull all the people together that have to be put, pulled together to be part of this decision. And taking the time, I think what schools are up against uh, many places, and we were up against this two, two and a half years ago when we made the decisions uh, that we made, um, is they wake up one day and they realize that all their technology needs to be refreshed. They have limited budgetary you know, availability or resources, and they have to do something yesterday. Uh, one of the things I think that we're, we're trying to do this time, and I, and, and I think we're on the right track in doing this, is we have the time in advance to make the decision. But that's what's so great about this process now. We can take the time to really think about it, have discussions. And, and not say, you know, we have 60 days or 90 days. What do we want to do with this lease? Let's turn it out and get it go into new technology, which often leads people to settle for what they've already had. You know, more just more of an updated version of what they already have, right. um, but not be able to explore new, new pathways. And I think that what we're trying to do is build the time in, in the front end so that the yeah. decision on the back end becomes the best decision that we can possibly make. Yeah, absolutely. So, now, you know, um, you have a wide variety of stakeholders that are part of the decision-making process. <laughs> Making the decision and then implementing it, you know, two very different things. And it sounds like, you know, you're, you've got a plan to, to work on both. Um, what we heard from um, one of the technology leaders that's in North Carolina, one of the obstacles was actually with some uh, community members, community members that were like not as accepting of technology taking the place mm. of the textbook and of other ancillary resources that they think should belong in the classroom. Yes. Do you have any sense with your community? Yes. Um, are, they, are they ready for this? Are they ready for some of the changes that are going to happen in Tabernacle? That's a great question, and that's interesting that another, um, another school district brought that up because uh, in our first day of work with uh, we did uh, the beginnings of a situational appraisal. Yeah. And one of the things that we had a chance to talk about is what are our expectations? What do people want to see happen? And, and one person um, at in the committee brought out the fact that we need to prepare our parents because, uh, I mean, in, in gathering preliminary information, we conducted a survey uh, with our staff, um, of our parents, of our students. Uh, to get their input on the technology process and get input on helping us make this decision and asking them how they use technology within Dagon. So part of it is to make the community aware that we have this committee, that we're examining how we're using technology to get their input. But we realize that in this process there's going to be have to be a parent educational component. Yeah. Misconceptions. Some of the parents will think that you know if the students in second or third or fourth grade are in, are on the computer that they're not learning, they're not doing other things that are yeah yeah. Take them. But that's a factor that has already come out as a consideration in our group, and we're going to have to come up with uh, a plan when we roll out uh, our decision on educating the parents on how technology will be used meaningfully to enhance yeah. education, not replace it. Right, right. What, how do you see this changing instruction? It is. And for, for, for some, they're chomping at the bits to, to, yeah. to change the way that they approach because they're technology-oriented staff. Uh, and, and in others, this is going to be you know, a much greater learning curve for them. Um, what we also recognize uh, outside of the parent education piece that you mentioned is that there's a big component of professional development. So part of our plans are to get people properly trained and also build capacity within our own schools to utilize our staff who have talents and skills that they could share with their colleagues and peers. So those are the couple ways that we plan on approaching that. I think the way that technology will change the way teachers teach is, is that it will change the ways students and teachers can interact and share information. We've talked about simple things like uh, in the writing process and putting the document on Google Sheets and putting it up on the, on the uh, projector on the whiteboard. 
where everyone is looking at the same document and going through the writing process and editing it together using their technology and all of them in, in that same sheet, adding words, taking words out, and the teacher also going through the process. So where you have you know, 16, 18, 19, 21 students all collaborating on one document through the writing process. So we see it, I think our staff is on board with that, being technology be integrated into the teaching, not necessarily becoming a separate teaching uh, you know, um, direction, but how it's going to now enable them to enhance the instruction they're already providing. Well, it sounds like you, that's a good part of your, important part of your plan for the rollout, for right. sure. Um, and kind of wrapping things up, George, I'm, I know that you're early in the process around decision making and, and thinking about how you implement this, but if you had one piece of advice to give to another superintendent who's just thinking about you know, what this kind of significant decision making might look like, what have you learned? What would you share with that superintendent? What I would share is, unless all of your technology needs to be replaced tomorrow, ASAP, and there's some sort of pending emergency, take the time to get all the stakeholders involved. It's Good. important. It's, so, it's such an expensive investment over time, and make, and make sure that you, you scan your environment to identify all those critical stakeholders, because there, there are stakeholders sometimes you don't think our stakeholders, like sure. you mentioned the parents, obviously they come to mind to some people because they're an important part of the education process. But your facilities and supervisor, you know, your technology yeah. coordinator, your business office, um, these are factors that we get sometimes hung up on the educational fa fa factor and when we forget all the supporting uh, educational departments that support the schools, like the technology director, the facilities supervisor, and the business office because they're going to help with the financing. They're going to tell you what you can afford. The technology person is going to talk to you about what your infrastructure can support and what you can support with staffing levels, too. So it's complex and there's many things to consider. But yeah. taking the time in the front end before rushing into a decision, even if it means having to hang in there with the technology you have, which is not something you're really that thrilled with, it's worth it in the back and at the yeah. end of the road to reach a decision that everybody feels was yep. arrived at in the yep. proper way. Well, I think that's probably been evident when you look at some other districts across the country that sort of hurried into the decision and maybe didn't consider everyone, and there there have been some repercussions that have not been so pleasant for them, including very bad uh, PR. In their and, absolutely. And the other thing I would add to this, too, is, is when you say rush into decisions, sometimes what happens is you'll have one or two critical stakeholders might be a business administrator, yeah. it might be a technology coordinator, or it might be a, um, a particular teacher that is involved in technology in the district. And they may have a strong opinion about what they think that you should do. So as a superintendent, you may receive some undue pressure from one stakeholder or two that's overwhelmingly, you know, but what you have to be able to do is you have to equalize the process, make it fair and equitable, and you have to ensure that all the stakeholders have equal input. Uh, not that you're just listening, one person has your ear, and that's the decision you're going to make because that's the person you, com you confide in and have a lot of you know, respect for. Um, it's tempting, uh, and it may get it done quicker, but again, if you're leaving certain stakeholders out of the process, ultimately, if not everybody's buying into the decision making, when you bring this expensive uh, decision on board, the stakeholders are not, they're the ultimate people that are going to have to use it with students. And if they don't buy in or they don't feel like it's, it's uh, something that they've been part of, um, it can make the difference between a success or a failure. Well, that's clearly a strong message, and we're going to get that out from George Rafferty at Tabernacle. <laughs>